This is the Weather Lounge here at Weatherworks. Hello and thank you for joining us once again here on the Weather Lounge. I am your host, Brad Miller. I mean, no, I'm not Brad Miller. It's Mike Mahalik, your host this time. Brad, I think he's somewhere on the beach drinking mimosas. And I'm enjoying very the sun. jealous of Brad right now. Like <laughs> I, I wish I was there on the beach, relaxing. But no, here I am on the podcast, having to host. I mean, ugh, right? No, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm no, uh, and that is our uh, production guy, uh, meteorologist Mike Briante. He's with me today. As always, you know, we're here with the company Weatherworks. We're located in Hackettstown, New Jersey. And it's getting into, it's well into March now, um, Mike, and we're heading into April too, but that's not to say that it can't snow anymore, right? Not at all. I mean, there's been so many times, Mike, where people think, oh yeah, it's March. It can't snow in March, right? Uh, Actually, no, and it can even snow in April, and we've seen that here in the northeastern United States and even other parts of the United States where it can snow all the way through through May, in fact. So, I mean, just because the calendar says it's spring doesn't mean nature is going to agree with that. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't long ago that we actually had some snow on Mother's Day, maybe? I think it was 2020 we had that. If I'm not mistaken, I think it was sometime. Yeah, it was 2020. We had it in May. We had some light snow in in, in, uh, in that, that, that time. Yeah, frame, that was so. really not cool. So if we can not do that again this year, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I really wish we could just kind of control the weather. I know they say we're meteorologists, right? We could change the weather. We wish, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Listen, if I could control the weather, I mean, uh, I'd be a very rich man, but I can't, um, but I can forecast it. Um, so, you know, that that is one of the benefits here. But, you know, Mike, I think it's a good idea, like just to give a general sense of what the average snowfall here is in March and April, basically from, you know, the northeast through the Midwest, where most of our listeners are from. Right. And I think through this uh, podcast, we're going to really be breaking down here, not just the average snowfalls, but kind of how snow is really, you know, a thing in, in the uh, the late season, early spring months. Uh, but just starting off with, yeah, like what Mike said with the average snowfall in March, I mean, yeah, it snows in March. I mean, we have we have kind of some some statistics here to kind of jot down. I don't want to bore our our listeners here with numbers and facts, but really the main gist of it is that, I mean, the average snowfall through the month of March, you know, as you go from like Boston, Massachusetts through through Philadelphia can range anywhere from five to 10 inches of snow. I mean, we still see uh, and this is over a 30 year average. So this is basically encompassing everything from now all the way back to what the uh, the early 90s. So obviously there's going to be some data that can be skewed, especially with what's happening you know, during this this time frame, and of course, uh, before 1990. But again, it's uh, it's something to keep in mind here. Um, obviously, there can be even more snow in the month of, month of March. Um, Boston, Massachusetts, for example, Mike, the highest they've seen in the past 30 years in in one month, 38.9 inches in March. Um, that's a lot of snow. That's like that's over the seasonal average for where I live in eastern Pennsylvania, basically. And that's and that's just for the month. I mean, like sometimes we've had seasons where even here in New Jersey, where we have not gotten over 20 inches for the entire season. And the season spans usually, I mean, typically December through late February. And we haven't seen more than 20 sometimes. And to think that Boston alone on one year, I don't know the year exactly, but 38 inches in one month. That's that's insane. Yeah, I mean, and partly that's likely due to these uh, larger nor'easters that can get going with a lot more moisture uh, in in March since it is a tra- transitional month. You know, there's a lot more moisture usually uh, getting fed out of the Gulf of Mexico and out of the Atlantic um, that can team up here and uh, provide a pretty moisture-laden storm as it moves up the East Coast. Right, right. And uh, even places down toward where you wouldn't think they could snow in March. I mean, Baltimore, the highest they've seen has been a foot in the month. I mean, they average about three, three point seven inches. So they still can see, you know, snow. Uh, Richmond, an inch and a half. 
average. I mean, again, that's going to be skewed based on big storms, but um, still, it's it's definitely possible. And we look at even April, and the numbers do go down significantly, Mike. It, it's not as not as big of a number, but still, Boston 2.4 average in in April. I mean, at that point, you're thinking like the the flower is already in bloom, like the 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 I don't know. The, the birds are back. Like the, the, those Canadian geese have flown back from Mexico. Right. And now they're coming yeah. back and they're saying, wait, what's all this, you know, frozen right, sure. stuff on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, the thing about it is I don't want to leave out the Midwest either because you know, they also typically see snow. It's typically like three to five inches on average from the Ohio Valley through Northern Illinois. Um, you know, kind of, away from the lakes we're not talking about any type of lake effect or anything obviously they could be higher there at any of those lake belts um but yeah they do see a good deal of snow in march and april out there too at times and they can see maximums over a foot so you know although everybody wants spring <laughs> i want spring I know, so do I. And we just had spring, like here in the Northeast. Uh, uh, it was a few seventy-seven, days ago. and as of the recording of this, you know, we're gonna have snow. So it's obviously March is such a roller coaster month. You really can't expect much in March. It can either be seventy degrees or thirty degrees. Yeah, I, it just tricks it, it tricks you so many in so many ways. It, it kind of reminds me of I don't know if you've seen that meme on uh, social media things, but uh, where it says like uh fake winter and then like oh i know you're fall, talking about and then real winter real and winter then mud, mud winter, season yeah mud season like the, the return of fall <laughs> third winter you know that sort of thing <laughs> i love that one that's great and it's yeah. funny too because everyone posts it like you know you have people that post it in pennsylvania people that post it down yeah. in like bc it's like that just goes to show you that it doesn't really matter where you are most places in like the northern half of the u.s yeah weather weather can change and the, the the pattern can flip on a dime march is always that transitional month and it's always been like that for a long time yeah yeah and you know i gotta say what is interesting about late season events is that yeah typically they're not on the smaller scale like when you get these storms in march um, you're not usually dealing with like a coating of snow it's usually you're going to get a couple of inches of snow or you're going to get nothing because it's so warm and it melts on contact. Um, and, you know, I mean, if you look at, you know, places in New England, so it's, you know, over the last 15 years, you know, they have only not seen measurable snow uh, once, I believe it is, <laughs> um, over the last 15 years. That's insane. Um, and if you go into like New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Southeast New York and the Hudson Valley, you know, you're getting measurable snowfall in the last 15 years, only about five or six times um, they have not seen measurable snowfall. And it's actually more likely to see over an inch or nothing at all. And there's that's just the what I was saying before. I mean, it's either you get a lot or you get just about nothing. You know, I think that also has to do with the fact that, like I mentioned, that we are in a transitional month. There's a lot of energy being buckled around with the with, with the jet stream. You're, it's really rare, like you said, to get a very minor event. And if we do, it's 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 not like a coating. It's like people get a couple inches, maybe half a foot. Um, and again, it's just because there's all that energy around. And I think the one thing, though, that does make it difficult, and it is, it makes sense that uh, a lot of places have a difficulty and we've seen this many times uh, during the day. It's snowing and it's March 15th and the pavement's all wet and the grass is covered in snow. Um, and I mean, you know, we'll talk about why that is. It's actually very interesting. And it all has to do with um, with the sun. And I think, Mike, you wanted to maybe elaborate more about sun angle, which I don't know if people really know about sun angle, but it's definitely a big factor. What we're talking about basically is the angle from the horizon to where the sun is in the sky at about noontime. So um, so basically what happens is the higher up the sun is in the sky or the greater the angle, it, it, it provides more energy to surfaces uh, or, and ground surfaces and pavements and things like that. So when it gives more energy from more direct rays, you're going to get warmer pavements. So when you have warmer pavements with a higher sun angle, 
accumulation from snowfall is going to be a lot harder. Um, you know, even if it's snowing during the day and it's 32 degrees, a lot of times if it's not heavy snow, this is just going to melt back. Um, especially if you put any type of uh, de-icer or something like that on, on the pavements. Now, when the sun is lower in the sky, like we get in, you know, the dead of winter, um, there's not a whole lot of energy coming from the sun. It gets more indirect rays onto the ground surfaces. So those pavements are going to run cooler and uh, pavement accumulation is a lot easier. Um, so it plays a big role, especially as you get late in the season, when that sun keeps creeping up higher and higher in the sky each day, we're getting more energy directed um, in at us in the Northern hemisphere. Um, so it gets harder and harder for that pavement accumulation to occur. Right. And, uh, and I guess something to really keep in mind here, and this is, this is a shock when I first heard about this, whenever I first heard about sun angles, that like the fact that a March sun, sun angle is equivalent to September and April is equivalent to August. The sun you see in August is at the same level in the sky as it is in April, late April at least. But that's, that's that's crazy to think about. Like it's the same kind of level where the sun is at, and it's and it's April and it, there's snow. It's just kind of it kind of boggled my mind whenever I heard about that. Yeah, and basically how why that is, and, and some listeners might be out there thinking like, well, if it's equivalent to August, why isn't it 80 degrees uh, in April all the time? You know that sort of thing. Um, but basically, there's something called seasonal lag um, that we deal with on the globe and it takes time for the sun, even though the angle's nice and high and we're getting more energy into the earth, it takes time for it to warm up bodies of water, warm up land masses, things like that. So it's just not like you're flipping a switch that, Hey, the angle's 60 degrees and all of a sudden we're 80. Now it takes some time. Um, and that's just why, you know, things aren't quite similar in April and August. Right. Right. Um, and you know, when Mike was talking about too, uh, with the pavements kind of, uh, not sticking during the day, you know, we have to mention, there are many, many events that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, of, of how that does, that doesn't occur because you have to factor in, you know, the rates and sometimes, and this happens all the time, even if the sun angle, even if it's a, a late March sun angle, if it's snowing two inches an hour, I don't care what the ground temperature is, Mike. It's going to cover eventually. You give it time, it will cover. You get that layer of snow. Snow's going to, it's not going to, the, the, the rate of melting is going to kind of basically be superseded by the amount of snow falling on top of it. And then all of a sudden you have seven inches of snow on, 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 on the road. Yeah, I mean, I say that all the time um, to a lot of our clients. You know, if it snows hard enough, I don't care if it was 80 degrees the day prior. I don't care what it is. But if it snows hard enough, you know, the snow will not melt fast enough. And eventually the flakes are going to start stacking up on each other faster than it can melt. So then you get, you know, obviously building up. Now, once that rate slows down, the melting will take over and then you'll start seeing the, the decrease on, on your pavements that, that are exposed to sunshine. And I saw that uh, even in late February, or maybe it was even mid-February when we had a storm here in the Northeast where, you know, I think we had, uh, I think it was about five inches of snow or something like that on colder surfaces. Um, but in the areas that were exposed to sunlight, it was only about two inches. So there was a big difference uh, between shaded areas and areas that were exposed. Right. And another thing I think people really don't... Um don't really realize and this is this is very true especially in march whenever you have a nice day in the 70s and then the forecast is calling for snow a few days later they think how can it actually snow if it was 75 degrees a day before you know it, it's and and i think it really we have to kind of really tell our listeners here that um you know despite it being warm if the air aloft in the atmosphere is cold enough it can snow despite the fact that you know, weather doesn't remember sometimes. And this is what I like to talk about. Sometimes weather forgets. It's almost like if it was 80 degrees one day and then the next day drops to the 30s, it's going to almost forget at least the air. The ground temperatures will remember, but the air temperatures forget, you know, and so it can snow even if it was like 75 the day prior, which is crazy to think about. 
but it happens. Now, does that mean that it's going to, you know, there's going to be a snowstorm if it snows the next day and everything's covered and it's a, ma a mass, a mess? No, because it all depends on the intensity. If it's a lighter storm, it's probably going to be like what Mike said, colder, grassy surfaces, pavements wet. But it's still crazy to think about that that can still happen. Yeah, yeah, it certainly can. And if you're uh, a little bit unsure about that, just uh, move out to Denver for a little while. Um, you know, there are classic out there for going from warmth to big snowstorms in in the spring. Um, and it, it's it's pretty uncanny how it works out there. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, hey, just look at a, a recent situation that happened uh, actually a few days ago. Uh, we were uh, 70 degrees here in the Northeast in a lot of places, even 75 or higher. Um, cold front came through, actually had severe thunderstorms uh, with it, with uh, damaging winds. Now the next day is cooler. And then only two days after that warm day, we're looking at a snow event that's probably going to drop a couple of inches of snow. So it doesn't take that long for the atmosphere to change and to bring these cooler temperatures and snow chances back in. And like what Mike was talking about, there's there's several different ways um, this can happen. Um, like like you said, the cold air aloft is is one of those things um, where you have a lot of cold air, you're making snowflakes up there, and then it starts precipitating hard with more and more snowflakes and heavily, and that brings kind of the cold air down with it as the snow continues to whittle away that warmer air at the surface. And then there's another way that that can happen, and that's with uh, evaporational cooling. Sometimes, you know, uh, you know, you have a, a a dew point, or basically the temperature at which condensation can form that's very low. And when you get that to um, when you get snowflakes evaporating into it, you know, that's when it starts to do its evaporational cooling process. You know. And, and that can cool down the atmosphere that way or, or dynamically. Um, so a couple different ways that it can cool rather quickly um, after it's been pretty warm. Um, but I think the big question is, Mike, and maybe you can answer this, is if it does snow, can it accumulate? So what are, what are the factors that go into will this snow accumulate? What, what do we think about as meteorologists when we're talking to our clients and, and we're trying to, you know, impart the impacts of the upcoming storm in a late season situation? Yeah, there's a lot of factors, Mike. Um, I think the one thing that really we think about, you know, in terms of accumulation, uh, it, it's really like there's a lot of things, but how cold is it going to be? You know, like obviously you need to be cold to snow, but if it's a 34 degree snow versus a 28 degree snow, it makes a huge difference. Uh, how cold is it the night before? You know, do we do we cool and, and, and clear out and our temperatures drop into the teens or the 20s? Is that enough time for the pavements to cool down? Um, and really, pavements are really another thing that we take into account, which I mentioned briefly. Um, if they cool enough, you could have some accumulation before the sun rises. Because the sun angle doesn't make a difference at night because we don't have the sun at night. So snow can definitely start to accumulate. Um, another thing, too, is, is it snow? Because we don't just have snow that falls from the sky. We can have other types of frozen precipitation, freezing rain and sleet. Um, and sleet especially is one of those precip types. And we've talked about it on a previous podcast. Uh, if you haven't listened to that one, it's probably... 20 episodes back or so we talked about mixed precipitation sleet is one of those tricky types because it can actually accumulate if the ground temperature is above freezing um, if it's heavy enough uh, the sleet pellets are not are not as prone to melt immediately on contact if anything they're very they're very rugged and durable so if you get enough sleet you could coat the surface and it ends up being kind of slushy but it's still a coating and it doesn't melt quickly and then if you get snow on top of that well, you just kind of made yourself a layer to, to accumulate. So yeah, I think I think if you think about that situation, you know, think about the consistency of of um, a sleep pellet. You know, it's it's just it's just, it's like an ice cube. 
you know? So if you have, say, if you took some fluffy snow and set it on the counter in your house and you put an ice cube on the counter on your, in your house, you know, the fluffy snow has just got a lot of air in it. It's just going to melt away very quickly because there's really not a whole lot of water content there. But then with the ice cube, you have that solid block of ice. So it just doesn't melt as readily. And that's what's happening with the sleep. Um, like Mike said, it just doesn't like to go anywhere. I like your rugged term. It's very rugged and durable. <laughs> it's Thank like, you. Thank you. It's, I don't know what you want to call it. It's like it's certainly, uh, yeah, certainly something that doesn't like to go away quickly. And, and that's, that's a tough thing for people who plow snow and, and deal with snow removal because, you know, you tell them, I'm sure you have in the past, Mike, you said like, well, it's going to be about a half inch, but it's going to be sleep. And a lot of times we get the question of, well, we can just salt it, right? And it'll be fine. Well, not really. <laughs> not really. No, it, it's it's tricky. Um, and, and that's why we say sometimes in sleet storms, you know, you really just have to kind of get ready to push and use your shovel. Um, another thing, too, that I didn't mention was the uh, rates. And I kind of briefly mentioned it before, but really, if you get one to two inch now rates, it's going to cover. I mean, eventually you give it time, it can cover, especially if it's one inch per hour or more at night, it's going to cover. I mean, you don't have sun at all. And if you're higher up, you know, elevation, huge difference. If you're at, you know, 10 feet above sea level versus 2000 feet, chances are 2000 feet is going to stick, even if it's marginal versus uh, 10, 10 feet above when you're marginal. Uh, that's just the way it is. You're colder aloft. So uh, it, it just ends up being an easier way to, to accumulate. So, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, we've seen that happen plenty of times in the past. I mean, I don't know if anybody in the Northeast remembers the, uh, uh, October snowstorm that was, Oh, what year was that? Um, I don't know the exact year, but it was a, a big October snowstorm, big Nor'easter that happened, uh, right before Halloween. And, you know, I believe in Hackettstown, we had something like four or five inches at the office itself, which is more in a valley. Um, but then as we went to the higher elevations at about 900 or 1,000 feet around the town, I think there was something like eight or nine inches on the hilltops. You know, so it made a huge difference in, in that early season storm. Uh, just that little bit of elevation change, that you know, 500 to 700 feet um, of elevation change can certainly make a difference. Of course, of course. And there's been other times. I mean, there's been so many events. We have a couple of cases here of like, especially here in the Northeast, uh, in, in Northeast New Jersey, where things have gone from being in the 60s during the day, falling into the 30s, and then going from rain to snow. One example I have here is uh, April uh, 15th. Uh, basically, it, it, the day was warm. It was in the 60s. Actually, Newark, New Jersey got to 66 degrees. Uh, it started to rain. And then as it started to rain, you know, things started to cool down. And we call this, you know, evaporative cooling. Sometimes the column above your head, the air starts to cool as you start to go down in the uh, in elevation here from, from, from top to bottom. And what happened is we started to get a bit of a mixing occurring as temperatures started to go from the 60s into the 50s into the 40s. Some sleet started to mix in with the rain, which is kind of a signal of, okay, there's some freezing layer up above our heads that's causing the rain to mix over to some sleet. And then we started to see some snow as we got into the 30s, which means now that snow is actually being developed instead of it just falling as rain. So instead of going to sleet from rain, it's actually just starting as, as some snow in the mix. And it actually ended up as... Uh, it wasn't a big event. It wasn't really anything crazy, but it ended up where, you know, some heavy rates developed and um, parts of New Jersey picked up, uh, what, maybe about one to two inches of snow in a little corridor from that and uh, even had some pavement coverings because it happened in the evening. If this was during the day, it wouldn't have been a big deal. But because the changeover happened basically from like eight to 11 o'clock at night, that's just how crazy sun angle is. If you don't have sun angle and it's heavy and it's, april and it was in the 60s and that's what i also say weather forgets the temperature it forgets right and it didn't matter in this case either because you had the sleet in the beginning um that created that layer of ice on the ground so that the snow can stick on top of it 
Um, so it, it didn't matter about elevations in this instance. I think this actually occurred over Newark, New Jersey, which is a heavily populated area, obviously. Um, so once you got that heavy precipitation in and um, you had liquid equivalents of, of the mixture that was falling of 0.1 inch or more an hour, um, you know, that was certainly enough and enough intensity to start, you know, getting those accumulations to occur, even though it was warm the prior day. Right, exactly. And, you know, that's just one event, obviously, of, you know, one to two inches. Nobody's going to cry over that. Yeah, although it is April, I don't want to see snow in April ever, no. ever. Nobody does. Um, but, I mean, there have been events, I mean, you know, in April and March. I mean, just talk about, you know, the storm of the century. 1993 Oof. that was in march but i mean we had lots of snow mike i mean i wasn't born then um but oh, i really I, no one oh year one year away i know i'm sorry you're I, making me feel very old i'm sorry right now well if it makes you feel any better i don't uh i mean i don't know anything about like any any march or april storms in the 60s so i'm sure you don't either no, so, of course not. Yeah. There you go. Well, there you go. So you, there you go. You're you're not you're not that old. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, March 1993. I mean, they called it the storm of the century or the super storm or whatever you uh, like to term it. But I mean, I know we've talked about this a million of times. Well, not a million times. Maybe about thirty times. It depends how many a podcast we have. No. <laughs> We don't talk about it on every podcast. No, That's no. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, uh, the Superstorm of 93 was just unbelievable. I mean, you're talking about, I think it had happened in the middle of March. Um, so it wasn't even early March. Um, but you had an incredibly powerful storm, which brought a ton of cold air down um, with it. And it basically snowed from... Uh, northern Alabama, Georgia, um, all the way through Maine. Uh, so it went right up the eastern portion of the United States. Um, and this had incredibly heavy rates. It had blizzard conditions. Um, you know, I, I believe where I was in eastern Pennsylvania, we had about 18 inches or so. Um, and there was a lot more um further to the west of me because i actually changed to sleep and i remember at the time you know i was a i was a i was young and i didn't understand the processes of weather uh, and, and how things can happen and i was so angry when it changed to sleep because i knew that was it i knew once it sleeted i'm not gonna see you know over two feet of snow and sure enough, I mean, it's sleeted. And that's because the low basically tracked almost directly over Philadelphia and directly over, you know, uh, New Jersey. So uh, just too much warm air was getting entrained aloft off the Atlantic. So created a little bit of that warm layer in there. So it melted those snowflakes and got that sleet mixed in. Yeah. Um, so I was bummed out, but I still got even bummed out too. So but it did change back to snow when it went on by. So. There was that. I mean, you got 18 inches. I mean, you got to yeah. think about that. That's a lot of snow. Yeah. So you didn't get 20, you know, 24 inches, 28 inches. You got 18 inches. That That's a lot. So, you know, that... Shouldn't complain if you're a snow lover, right? Yeah. Some people still do, even if they don't get 20 inches of snow. I mean, <laughs> beggars can be choosers, right? So Yeah. And, and if we want to get a little bit more recent, and uh, Mike, you might remember this one more. Oh, I do. Um, was it March of 2018? March of 2018, we had four nor'easters. It was the most ridiculous point of my meteorological career, <laughs> and I hope we never have that again. There was just so much energy that season. So the the the, the pattern was ripe. We had we, the the jet stream was in the right place. Things just phased the right way. We had all these snowstorms and. Honestly, one of the one of the snowiest marches I've ever had in my life, for sure. Um, so, I mean, I was, you know, obviously I'm older, so you know, comparing it to other storms like '93, but I was still incredibly impressed by that march, um, especially by one of the storms where basically um, it's I think it was raining at first and it switched to snow. And it turned heavy, and the winds were incredible. 
I mean, I, I forget what the wind gusts were. I, I think they were definitely over 50 miles an hour. Um, but I have videos of it um, that I share with, uh, with Mike here on our social media channels at Weatherworks, um, where it's just blizzard conditions, basically. And this is in March and trees were down. I got, I lost power for like five days. I had just moved into my uh, house um, only a year into it. So I, I didn't realize that, hey, I'm on top of a 700 foot hill. So yeah, it's going to get a little bit windy <laughs> anytime <laughs> a storm a little blows bit. through. Just a um, little bit. Even last night we had those winds come through. Uh, there was a wind storm that came through with the uh, thunderstorms and of course it was garbage night. So there I am, uh, you know, 11 o'clock at night chasing all the recycling down the street <laughs> because, you know, I couldn't. Oh my God. Yeah. I feel, is it, maybe it happens everywhere. Listeners out there, the, is it always windy when you put out your garbage uh, on garbage day? Because I swear. <laughs> I feel like it's just a, I don't know. It, it's almost like a hit or miss for me, but I feel like, I don't know. It, it's almost like it knows, like, hey, we got some trash out there. But yeah. see, it doesn't happen until the trash is yeah. removed. Like, I feel like whenever it's windy, it's after the, the garbage men came by yeah. and picked up the trash. And it's like an empty trash can. That's going to blow down the street. But, well, and then the and then the funny thing is I even told my wife, I said, I said look, I'm going to wait for the squall line to go through. That should be the windiest portion. And then it won't be as bad afterwards. But guess what? The winds did not subside after the squall line it actually i think it was stronger honestly and it was quite odd that it was stronger um after it went through so yeah uh, anyway enough about trash uh, <laughs> um, but uh let's kind of cover overall like um for accumulating snow i mean we covered a few things mike but let's just kind of break it down um to maybe about five points of of what are we really looking at for accumulating snow? Right, right. So, so here are the key here are the key things to think about when you're thinking about snow in March and April. Basically, you need to have temperatures cold enough, and that's kind of obvious at first. But if you're 37 degrees and snowing, I don't care even if it's at night, it's not going to stick. Um, and if it's light enough, and if it's also heavy enough, your temperatures are still going to be sort of you know on the on on the on the colder side anyway. So 32 to 34 is a general kind of a general sense of uh of kind of what you want to be at temperature wise um other other than that um i mean really the um the next thing to kind of look into is is how heavy is the snow you know is it is it coming down at a light rate are we looking at one to two inch an hour rates because that's definitely going to um uh that's definitely going to affect kind of how really either how much you can actually accumulate on pavements. And we talked about pavement accumulations and sort of how that all is affected by, and you need, you know, temperature, you need the ground temperatures to be cold enough. The time of day is very important, but the snowfall rates can sometimes supersede the ground temperatures. Um, again, nighttime, much better than, than during the day. Um, elevation is a sneaky part. And that's something to keep in mind here. If you are high up in altitude, March and April snow, don't, don't uh, don't don't sleep on it because you could get some snow on 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 your road at at 2,500 3,000 feet up despite you know let's say Newark New Jersey at the same temperature not doing anything during the same time of the of the day um, and then of course last thing and the thing we all don't like and Mike doesn't like is uh, is sleep um, just it it can make a a, a big hassle uh, pavements won't have sleet melt immediately it, sleet is is like I said it's rough it's rugged it won't melt immediately it likes to bounce around if it's heavy enough it's gonna basically pile on top of the pavements and uh, and uh, that could also help to leave a colder coating in case it goes back over to snow and now you're left with uh, actual pavement accumulation so just a couple of things to think about uh, as we wrap up here. Yeah, those are the main things. And if you want to know a little bit more about how sleep forms, um, like Mike said earlier, there is another podcast. I think it's titled uh, The Atmosphere is Like an Oreo, um, something like that, um, where I compared the atmosphere to an Oreo to try to explain uh, how sleep forms. So go back, take a listen to that, and we'll go through all the winter precip types 
um, and how they come about. Um, but so as far as the rest of the winter here, it, it, it is um, the first week of March or so, and we're heading into you know the rest of March and April. What is left for the winter season? What what can we be expecting? So. I know there's a lot of people wanting the spring weather, and I do think we'll see days of warm weather. Um, however, there still will be a big ridge that will probably be stationed over parts of um, Alaska and western portions of Canada. Um, and then that kind of in turn throws a big colder trough across you know, the Hudson Bay into the Great Lakes and the northeast U.S., um, and unfortunately with that type of setup, if you're looking for, um, persistent warmth and spring-like weather, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, we have, uh, you know, a pretty active polar jet stream and then a subtropical jet stream that will be bringing in a lot of moisture. And it's going to probably combine at times with low pressure systems across the Southern portion of the United States and then work its way off the East coast depending on where that track is, you know, it is where we can see some snow events. Um, so unfortunately, Mike, I don't think we're out of the woods from basically the upper Midwest uh, through the Ohio Valley into the Northeast. I, I think we still have snow chances. Um, Come on, Mike. I don't yeah, want to hear that. I, I know. Come but, on. But what Man. do you want? I see. This is why I don't want to host a podcast. Because see, now you're telling me all these bad things about winter. This, <laughs> well, maybe people like this. You, there might uh, be. There's a lot of snow lovers out there. I'm sure true. there's a lot of snow lovers that are uh, listening to this podcast right now. They might be going, "Yes, I still got a chance to see more snow." I know one of our meteorologists at WeatherWorks. Oh, I, I know. Um, will be bouncing off the walls uh, when it snows again, and I believe. You know, that'll be very soon here, actually, if you're in the Northeast. But, um, you know, there's there's a couple of storm threats. I, I mean, there's at least two storm threats coming up in the next week, um, you know, and hopefully we we'll start calming things down once we get towards the end of March. Um, but, uh, you know, you know how uh, fickle uh, April and March can be. We talked about oh, it earlier in the show here. So I know 100 percent. You know, I, I hope that gave a, a really good, uh, a really good uh, kind of roundabout uh, idea of how these late season snow events work. And, you know, hopefully you got a lot from this. Um, but, Mike, do you want to wrap it up here and take us out? Yeah, no, of course. Thanks for listening to our podcast. If you like what you heard, of course, you can always uh, drop down a, uh, a review. We're on Apple Podcasts and any podcast hosting site that you listen to. Leave us a review. Let us know what we're doing. You know, give us give us a like. And uh, if you have any interest in a future episode or if you, you know, want to give us some feedback, you can always uh, email us at theweatherlounge at weatherworksinc.com. And you are on social media here at Weatherworks Professionally. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And as always, you know, we have our professional website, weatherworksinc.com, if you are curious about what we do here other than our podcasting duties. And as always, we'll, uh, we'll catch you here next time. Beautifully done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.